What's up everybody, this is DJ Blaze and I'm on djbooth.net and this is the full video review of the all new Pioneer DDJ T1 Digital DJ Controller. Okay, first up we'll talk about the overall impressions and setup. Overall impressions of the Pioneer DDJ T1 are very good. First of all, it's built with a good construction. There is a metal chassis underneath and hard plastic on the top and the sides and the back of the unit. Um, built to last, it's really not all metal like some of the other controllers out there on the market, but nonetheless, still built to last, still will last you years to come. Along with uh, general impressions, we have the four decks here of control and four lines of mixing. So this is the tractor four deck version. There's also the DDJ S1, which is the Serato version and that's on the market as well and that one is just two lines whereas this one is four lines uh, to go along great with the Tractor Scratch Pro 2 software or the tractor program that comes specially created for the DDJ T1 so that'll bring me right into the setup. The setup is very easy all you need here is your output you can use your RCA or your quarter inch you can also you also need to have your USB cable attached to the back here and you also need the AC power adapter which is a power pack adapter uh, attached to the back as well. Along with the setup you'll get two discs if you're using a Windows machine you need to use both discs because the first disc will be your software and the second disc will be your actual driver and again the software that it comes with is a DDJ T1 tractor edition and it, it will utilize all four decks of control for this review we are actually using the Tractor Scratch Pro 2 software and in order to find that TSI mapping all I did was go to the Pioneer website go to the drivers and downloads section click on DDJ T1 and then you bring up that .tsi file you download it and then you import it into your tractor program everything worked very good very easy didn't have to go back in and remap anything or mess with any of the controls everything was ready to go as soon as we unboxed and unripped that TSI file and attached it directly to the tractor software. Alright next up we have the inputs and outputs and we'll start with the outputs which are here on the back to the left corner and first off you'll notice we have the balanced quarter inch outputs here then we have the RCA outputs and we also have an auxiliary input with its own um, volume control knob and for some reason on the DDJ T1 the balanced outputs here are quarter inch but on the DDJ S1 Serato edition controller from Pioneer they actually have balanced XLR outputs don't know what the reason is for the change but just so you guys know these are going to be different on both of those units and we'll move over to the right and here you'll see we have the USB connection here the on off switch the power adapter input on the front you'll find the microphone input along with the microphone volume knob and an input select meaning you can only use the aux or the mic one at a time you can't use that aux input on the front the same time you're using a microphone input keep that in mind for guys who need both at the same time Next up we have the headphones and in the headphones area we have a quarter inch and an eighth inch jack and it's up to you to choose one or the other. They both won't work at the same time. Okay next up we'll talk about the heart of the whole unit which will be the mixing console and for mixing console I'm referring to the actual middle area where we do the mixing with all the faders and knobs to control your track and first off we have a nice crossfader it's similar to the crossfaders found in the other DJM top of the line mixers feel like it'll last a long time doesn't have very much resistance as it's a crossfader you know it's pretty scratch worthy the crossfader can be adjusted, the curve control can be adjusted within the tractor software as with other controllers. 
and the line faders are also very good they have a lot more resistance this way they're made for accurate mixing you know when you're trying to get just the right levels easy to find here no center click so it's nice and easy to ride all the way up from minimum to maximum levels there's also the channel fader start on off switches here so any deck that you actually want to have a fader start on at that time you just move it over to the side and you will automatically start the track that's loaded onto that next deck that you have selected there's also sync master Q and FX buttons here above every line so meaning you can set either deck that you want either of the four decks to master and the others can easily sync to that master deck by B via BPM by using this sync button when you press the button they all illuminate the master or the sync or the Q the Q button corresponds to the headphone section so either one of these that you have pressed will actually be the Q section of the headphones and here is your headphone controls in the middle there's a volume knob and a headphone knob all the knobs here are a hard plastic similar to other DJM mixers everybody who uses Pioneer products will be right at home with this device and we also have the FX buttons they also illuminate and they correspond to FX Bank 1 and FX Bank 2 depending on which FX, FX Bank has an FX selected you will be able to select that appropriate bank to any of the four decks that you would like and you can do it in any combination there's also a three band EQ here for each individual channel and they are absolute kills for low mid and high and there's also a smaller gain knob for each of the four decks as well there's also a main volume control here for your master volume another small knob just like the headphone and gain knobs a little bit smaller than your oversized EQ knobs here next up we'll speak on the actual deck controls and when I say deck controls I'm referring to the left and the right actual track manipulation portions of the DDJ T1 and we have very nice jog wheels they're the same that's found on the DDJ S1 and the CDJ 400s they have the push pressure top plate here so you really know when you're engaging the platter and the LED rings on the platter will move around to correspond to your movements they are very high resolution as you can see anything you do on these will definitely correspond exactly to your track you don't have to worry about missing a beat here or any hiccups and again this is on the tractor 2 software so you can see the high resolution uh, jog wheels are excellent just as on the DDJ S1 uh, the Serato H version of the same controller also found here you can see very familiar play pause and cue buttons same as what's found on the CDJ offerings they're in the same location they feel the same look the same you also have your tempo slider here there is a center click here for the user to know exactly when they're back at absolute zero there's a tempo range button here the tempo can be switched to the different ranges within the software I believe it's eight percent ten percent fifty percent hundred percent and there's also a key lock button here so you can make sure that when you're changing that pitch that you still stay on key also each deck has a needle search function up here where you can search within the track and through the track depending on where in the track depending on where in the track you wanna find yourself at it's easy way to navigate through your track there's also a filter knob for each individual deck and again the deck on the left will control deck A and deck C while the deck on the right will control deck B and deck D so if we're playing some music apply the filter and you have your filter knob here. also along with the deck controls each deck has its own 
loop control here in and out along with other loop functions and also hot cue section and other functions related to the loop that you set. Okay, next section we have here is the hot cues, loops, and sample deck. Sample decks are the feature that are for the tractor software only. And we'll run it down by starting with hot cues. In order to set your hot cues, you have a total of eight hot cues here in tractor. You'll see it's only four buttons here, but each of the buttons count for two. There's a way to shift these actual buttons and turn that from four to eight. The hot cues. We already got one set in there. We can set another one. Just set them by pressing them. Very easy to set. That's the hot cues. In order to delete the hot cues, you just hold the delete key as they all blink, and then you go back and delete the ones that you don't want anymore. The loop in and out function is next, and this is similar to all the other CDJs and the DDJS one that's out there. Um, anyone who's familiar with the loop functions on any of the CDJ Pioneer offerings out there will be right at home here, as it's exactly the same. Set your loop in, then loop out it, and then you can use your auto loop button here or knob here in order to shorten or, or, or grow that loop. Uh. The buttons for the hot cues also act as loop edit buttons so you can change the size of the loop or you can make it earlier or later depending on uh, the combination of buttons you press here in order to change the actual properties of the loops that you set. And also within the Pioneer DDJ T1 we have the sample decks as I told you guys earlier and when you set decks C and D or whatever other decks you want to set to sample decks we'll turn that to C now and We'll actually make these guys sample decks within the software. And now your sample banks, one, two, your hot cues, one, two, three, four, are now your sample sample banks, one, two, three, four. And you can easily throw a sample in there. It'll set up and it will be able to play. And you can hear your, your sample back. And you can also use the line controls to control your sample deck just as with any other regular track deck. While I was using this feature I was not able to manipulate the sample decks using the actual jog wheel so when I would play back a sample deck I wasn't able to manipulate that sample with the jog wheel. Not sure if it was something within my mapping or something that I overlooked but from the factory and just as it is when you install it the sample decks can be played but I couldn't manipulate them with the platter. So perhaps someone can clear that up for me, but right off the top, I could not manipulate the sample deck playback with the platter as I could with, let's say, the Tractor Control S4. Next up, we have the effects and software control. And we have two effects banks here on the DDJ T1 and we have FX Bank 1 and FX Bank 2 and these are perfectly mapped within the tractor software anyone who knows what the tractor software looks like you'll notice there's a dry and wet knob to the left and three other effects here that you can program and set within tractor 2 there's a plethora of different effects that you can set them up to for now we have it set to delay gator and beat masher on effects 1 and on effect 2 we have a filter O, a phaser and a normal filter set to these parameters here. So for a quick demo
And next up, we'll talk about the file navigation. Within the tractor software, you're allowed to navigate through your files using this big oversized browse plastic knob. It's located right in the middle of the DDJT1. And when you have a track that you want to select, there are four load buttons here, one corresponding to each deck. So you can load the track that you've just selected into any of the four decks of your choice. Very easy to use, very intuitive, nice and laid out, easy to find, and easy to read. Also, with the design for file navigation, there is a cutout underneath the Pioneer DDJ S1 so that you can put your laptop, lay it out, and have your screen come up just over the top of your unit here. Some people like that feature, some people don't. Some the people that don't like that feature are guys who like to use their touchpad or who like to actually press their keys for file navigation. Um, with the laptop underneath, you won't be able to do that. You're solely relying on your DDJ T1 for file navigation and for track loading. Some others do like it because they want to touch the keyboard as little as possible and only want to see a screen. Well, in conclusion, the Pioneer DDJ-T1 Digital DJ Controller is one of the best tractor controllers out there on the market today. And it's recommended for anyone who can afford the $1,100 price tag but still really wants a good quality digital DJ tractor controller. You know, it's also recommended to those who need four decks and four channels of control. And it's... It's also recommended for those DJs who are very used to and familiar with the Pioneer control schemes of their Pioneer CDJs and their DJM mixers. Like, for example, there can be professional DJs out there that, you know, want a compact setup. They're used to going to clubs and they're using their CDJs and DJM mixers made by Pioneer and they want something to feel exactly the same or very familiar to that club setup that they're used to without completely throwing off their game. This would be very good for that. It's not very portable. As you can see, it's pretty big, but um, it's definitely more portable than two CDJs and a DJM mixer. Um, we'll start with the Pros. For the Pros, it has great build quality. It's very sturdy very durable even though it's plastic most of the way it does have the metal chassis underneath there's four decks of control here the sound quality is excellent there's some very nice high resolution jog wheels they won't miss a beat good scratch worthy pioneer crossfader and it has a nice feature set you know it has hot cues effects map perfectly to tractor needle search and also the new sample deck features on the con side, there's no line level LED indicators, so you can't look at a glance and tell which of your tracks are clipping or not here. You also could not manipulate the sample decks with the platter. I could only play the sample decks. I could not really manipulate them with the platter, although all of my other track functions worked just fine with the sample decks. You also cannot use the Pioneer DDJ T1 as a standalone unit, meaning the computer is always required. Even when you want to use your straight through aux um, inputs on the back, you still need it to go through the software in order for the machine to work. There's also a lack of line inputs or time code compatibility, meaning there is no actual line inputs here for each of these direct lines. So if you want to use DVS type of software for time world code control it won't work with this so you can't use external decks in combination with the DDJ T1 also another gripe I have is that the line fader is not user replaceable um, even though it is a high quality DJM style fader uh, made by Pioneer for Pioneer I've never seen a DJM um, fader go bad or, or break before so um, no real worries there, but it's always good to know that you can replace or upgrade a fader when needed, but um, they're not user-replaceable here on the Pioneer DDJ-T1. 
also my last gripe with it is that it's pretty expensive at 1100 bucks brand new all the other uh, controllers out there that are for a tractor that are very comparable are actually cheaper so this is at the higher price point for a tractor all-in-one controller other than that if you're a DJ who likes tractor products and Pioneer products then the DDJ T1 will have you right at home with the tractor software and obviously on a Pioneer product if you prefer Serato then you might want to go take a look at our review for the DDJ S1 which also runs on the Rain Serato software from beginners to experts DJs of all types will appreciate the features and the build quality of the DDJ T1 for more full written reviews video reviews and all the other DJ blog information that we have on DJ equipment check us out at www dot djbooth.net slash djs for djs also check out the youtube channel that's youtube.com slash real dj blaze and also follow me on twitter at djblaze underscore djbooth thanks for watching